right, here we go. Uh, so today we're going to learn about acceleration. All right, so what is acceleration? Well, so far, in all of the problems that we've done, our objects have been moving at a constant velocity, right? Just like... But we haven't had anything that has been speeding up or slowing down. You have to make the sound effects. All right? So our objects have all been moving at a constant velocity. And so what that means is the velocity was always the same as the average velocity if your velocity is constant, right? Like if you're always going 60 miles an hour, then your average velocity is going to be 60 miles an hour, right? So, but what do we do if the object's velocity changes? Now, quick comment on this. So from this point forward, whenever you hear me use the word velocity, or I use the word velocity in one of our problems, what I'm actually referring to is our instantaneous velocity. The velocity, boom, at that instant. Okay? I hope that snap wasn't really loud in your headphones. <laughs> uh, earbuds, sorry. Um, so whenever we use the word velocity, we're talking about the velocity at a given moment, at one split second in time. Um, now, if the velocity is constant, easy, right? Because it's just, you know, however fast you're going. Um, and then if I want the average velocity, the problem will specifically ask for exactly that. Okay? All right. So if the object's velocity is changing, then what we have to do is we have to find the acceleration. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is whoop, the rate at which an object velocity changes, all right? Notice the word rate here, right? Rate, that's going to become important, all right? And then a quick comment. The symbol for acceleration is a lowercase letter a. It turns out it is a vector, though, so we're going to want to put a little boop, boop, little vector hat on it, right? Okay? All right, so usually when you think of an object accelerating, you think about it speeding up, right? Like, oh, I'm going to accelerate as I get onto the freeway, okay? Um, and that is fine for daily use, but in physics, the word accelerate is a much more general term, all right? In physics, you can accelerate by changing your velocity in any way, okay? In physics, you can accelerate by changing your velocity in any way. So you can speed up, and we would say you're accelerating. You can slow down, and we would say you're accelerating. You could even say you're turning and that would also be accelerating, right? Because remember, velocity changes. Well, when does velocity change? So I'm going 60 miles an hour west, right? There's my velocity. I could go 50 miles an hour west. Oh, I slowed down. My velocity changed, right? Or I could turn. I could change from going west to going north, right? That would also be a change in velocity because remember, velocity is a vector. So these are the three ways in which you can change your velocity, speed up, Speed up, slow down, or turn, all right? Which ones of these are changes in speed? Whoa. These ones are the only ways to change your speed. So there are three ways to change your velocity and only two ways to change your speed, all right? So back to acceleration. So remember, acceleration measures the rate at which the change occurs, the rate at which your velocity changes. Essentially, acceleration tells us how much the velocity increases or decreases per unit time. How much did your speedometer go up or down each second? Okay, that's what the acceleration tells us. All right, so a couple quick examples that are just sort of not numeric, but just kind of designed to help you think about it. All right, so in this first example here, it says, imagine you're in a large school bus at a red light. You look out the window and you see a Corvette or some crazy fast sports car right next to the bus, right? The light turns green, boop, and both the bus and the Corvette speed up to a speed of 45 miles an hour. All right, but like picture that, right? So the Corvette's going to go, right? And the bus is going to go, okay? And so uh, in this scenario, the Corvette has a large acceleration because its velocity increased from 0 to 45 miles an hour in a small amount of time. Whereas the school bus has the same change in velocity, you're still going to 45 miles an hour, but it takes more time, right? It takes more time, okay? Um, so that's an example for speeding up, right? All right, you can also change your velocity by slowing down, all right? And so a large acceleration would mean you're slowing down quickly, and a small acceleration means you're slowing down gradually, 
All right, so imagine two identical cars driving 50 miles an hour. The driver of car A is going to accelerate slowly by just slowly pressing the brake pedal, and so the car is going to slow down and stop, right? The driver of car B stops his car by driving into a brick wall, All right? Going from moving to bam, not moving. That's a very rapid change in velocity, and as a result, a large acceleration, right? So we're going to have acceleration of car A is going to be small, acceleration of car B is big, okay? In that last example, we had uh, we had the acceleration of the Corvette as opposed to the acceler... Ex Ooh, it's not what I wanted to do. Whoop. Oh my gosh, go away. <laughs> as opposed to the acceleration of the bus. Sorry, a little technological glitch there. Okay, um, all right, and then finally, here's a turning example, all right? So imagine two identical cars driving at 60 miles an hour. Car A drives without slowing down around a gradual curve around the freeway, right? Because that direction is changing. It's a change in velocity, okay? So that would be the acceleration of car A. Car B is also driving at 60 miles an hour, and it turns from Jefferson Avenue onto Fisher, right? Oh my gosh, that's a really tight turn, right? There's no way you could make that turn at 60 miles an hour. But if you could somehow, then that would be a much larger acceleration because it's changing its direction much more quickly as opposed to the one on the freeway, which is more gradual, okay? So this chapter, because we are still just doing linear motion, we're only going to focus right now on these two in terms of doing the math, okay? Um, we will talk about this in chapter, I don't know, I'm going to say chapter 8. I don't know what chapter it is, but later on we'll talk about that, all right? Okay, so let's dig into the math on this, all right? Um, I think we already talked about this, right? Two ways to change speed, speed up, slow down. Three ways to change velocity, speed up, slow down, or turn. I'm going to skip that slide, whoosh, because we already did it. All right, so how do you calculate acceleration? All right, well, it turns out the equation for acceleration is... Vf minus Vi over T. Okay, so what do these different uh, variables represent? Well, Vi is your initial velocity. It's the velocity at the beginning of the time interval that you're interested in. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't have to mean like initial velocity at the dawn of time. It just means at the instant when the problem kind of begins, you know, uh, what's your velocity? All right, and then some amount of time later, you're going to have some other final velocity at the end of some time interval, right? T then represents how much time that little time interval took. Uh, essentially, it's the time that it takes to go from your initial to your final velocity. All right, and then finally, acceleration is the rate at which the velocity changes, how much the velocity changes per unit time. Now, technically speaking, this equation here is actually the equation for the average acceleration. But because this is a first-year course, we're not going to worry about that. Just if we're finding acceleration, that's what the acceleration is. So we're not going to worry about instantaneous or average or anything with acceleration, just with velocity. Okay? All right. Um, so I'm going to not worry about writing average every time here. But one other thing we do need to be aware of, I know you're excited. These guys are all vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and put vector hat on him. Same thing down here. Notice time is not a vector. All right, so there's our equation for acceleration. Vf minus Vi over T. All right, so let's do an example. All right. So uh, this first example, I'm going to use uh, miles per hour simply because I think they're a little bit more intuitive to you. Uh, this is probably the last example we'll do where we use miles per hour. Okay, we usually we're going to switch over to meters per second. Um, and I think you saw some of that on the last two worksheets, right? Okay, so example number four. So many car magazines are going to tell you the amount of time that it takes for a car to go from zero to 60. All right, what that does is it measures how much time it takes. Why can't I point my watch at the camera? There we go. It tells us how much time it takes uh, for the car to speed up from a dead stop to a speed of 60 miles an hour. All right, so suppose we've got some fancy sports car, and it's going to go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5 seconds. Let's find the acceleration. All right, so as we get more and more equations, taking the time to write out your givens is going to become increasingly important. So I'm always going to start there. All right, so what are we given? Well... We're starting at rest, 
Uh, we're going to speed up to a final velocity of 60 miles per hour. All right, notice MPH is miles per hour. That's the only time that I'll use M, uh, M for miles. Okay, usually M is meters. But we see MPH on street signs around the country often enough that we know that's miles per hour. All right. Okay, how much time does this take? It takes five seconds, and we are looking for our acceleration, right? All right, so. Whoop. Okay, so how do we find acceleration? Well, accelerate, ooh, try again. Acceleration is VF minus VI over T. All right, I know the math here is easy, but the units are really important. All right, so acceleration is VF minus VI over T. So our final velocity is 60 miles per hour. I don't know why I'm switching between MPH and miles per hour, but whatever. Minus our initial velocity was zero miles per hour divided by our time, which is five seconds. And notice we get an answer of, and I'm gonna color code this. We get, uh, well, I guess we can do this. We get 12 miles per hour per second. Okay, so that's what our acceleration is. All right, so more important, well, not more importantly, but just as importantly, you have to know what this number means, all right? Now, what I tend to find is in an honors physics class, students are just like, give me the equation and I'll do it, which is cool. It's a, a good skill to have, but I don't want you to uh, rely so much on the equations that you lose out on the concepts, okay? Uh, as the content in this class gets more involved, uh, that's really not going to work to your advantage, all right? So let's make sure we don't just memorize equations. We've got to understand the concepts as well. All right, so what does this mean? Here's what it means. I'm going to color code my answer here. So here we go. Every second... Oh, let's do this one in green. Notice this number is positive. That tells us that the velocity is increasing because it's positive. By 12 miles per hour. Okay? Every second, the velocity is increasing by 12 miles per hour. This question is going to be all over your first couple of homework assignments where it says, what does the acceleration tell us about the motion? This is the answer I want. Every second, the velocity either increases or decreases by some number of miles per hour. And in a minute, we'll learn it's not miles per hour, it's meters per second. Yeah. Okay, so. So if you wanted to picture it, here's what's going on. At time zero, the speedometer pointed at zero. And then every second it goes up by 12, right? So after one second, the speedometer is pointing at 12. After two seconds, the speedometer is pointing at 24. After three seconds, we're going to be over here at 36. After four seconds, we're going to be at, what, 48. And after five seconds, whoops, my stupid head is in the way. 60 miles an hour, right? So notice, it took five seconds for this velocity to go from zero to one, two, three, four, five, now point at 60, okay? All right, now, on your homework, for this first assignment is I want you to solve these problems by using these little velocity time charts, all right? So it says another way we could think about this is by using a chart. The velocity began at zero and then increased by 12 miles per hour each second. So you're gonna make these little charts on your first homework assignment. Time in seconds, velocity, miles per hour. At time zero, our velocity was zero. We've got five seconds that elapse. Every second, the velocity goes up by 12. Okay? So, and notice, what's the velocity doing every, every second? Oops, I wanted that to be blue. What's the velocity doing every second? Going up by 12 miles per hour per second. Okay? All right. Okay, so hopefully you understand what the acceleration means now. So like I said, uh, kind of when we began this, we can't measure our acceleration in miles per hour per second because miles per hour isn't metric. All right, so from now on, we're going to measure our velocity in meters per second. So that means our acceleration is going to be in meters per second per second, or we'll see.
All right, so here we go. So here's another example, very similar to the one we just did. Car is driving at 23 meters a second. Ooh, shoo. Did I put all my arrow heads on, or my vector hats on here? Yes, all right, sorry. <laughs> all right, so our initial velocity is 23 meters a second. We're gonna hit the brakes, and so four seconds are going to elapse, and at the end of that time, we're gonna have a final velocity of only three meters per second. Find the car's acceleration. All right, so this example is gonna illustrate a couple things. One, we're gonna watch our units. Two, we're gonna really focus on this idea that acceleration is a vector, all right? So check it out. Let's just start by the math. I understand how to use equations. Plug and chug, right? Okay, cool. Acceleration is VF minus VI over T. So our final velocity is three meters a second. Oops, I don't need an arrowhead over that. Uh, initial velocity is 23 meters a second. Time is four seconds. So I'm looking at a decrease in velocity of 20 meters a second in four seconds. So I've got negative, oops, seconds. So I've got negative five meters per second per second, which is written as negative five meters per second squared. And that is my acceleration. Okay. So what does it mean? Well, it means that every second, the velocity decreases by five meters per second. Notice to interpret this, I used the meters per second per second units, right? Um, but mathematically, meters per second per second is the same as meters per second squared. Maybe I should show you why. So meters per second per second is the same as meters per second divided by seconds. Keep change flip, meters per second times one over seconds, right? And you get meters per second squared. All right, but when you hear that, that phrase, that, here, let me write this. So when you hear meters per second squared, I want you to go, oh, meters per second squared. That means meters per second per second because it shows us every second the velocity decreases by five meters per second. Notice seconds appears in my answer twice, seconds and seconds. So that's why it's meters per second squared, all right? Also notice my answer came out negative, which means that the velocity is decreasing. But it also sort of implies that acceleration is a vector, all right? It has direction. So how do we figure out what direction the acceleration points in? Um, sorry. Um, oh, I guess I was going to talk about that in a minute. Mm, let's jump ahead a slide. All right, so check it out. So which way does the acceleration vector point? So here we got, we have our answer for this question. All right, so there are two possibilities. If the object is speeding up, then the acceleration vector points in the same direction as the velocity, because the acceleration is kind of like helping or working with the velocity. So if you've got a car that's driving forwards, and then the driver presses on the gas pedal, then the acceleration is helping the velocity, and so they both both the acceleration and the velocity point in the same direction. Whereas if that same car is slowing down, here's my velocity vector, right? But if it's slowing down, now the acceleration is working against it, and so now my acceleration points to the left. So notice, now in this scenario, one of those two has to be negative, right? Because remember, linear motion, you pick one direction to be positive, one to be negative. So in this scenario, most of you would probably call this a negative acceleration. All right, but be careful. Negative acceleration does not always mean slowing down, okay? Um, suppose we've got a car that's going backwards and speeding up, right? So here's another car speeding up. So here's my car, here's my velocity vector, right? Most of you would probably make that negative because we usually do left as negative, so that's a negative velocity. And then if the car speeds up, my acceleration's helping that negative velocity get more negative. Okay, so drawing in a sign, an arrow rather, for your acceleration vectors will make your life easier, okay? Um, 
Cool. So anyway, that, that's one of those things you'll get experience with it uh, as you practice this more, okay? All right, so let's go back to this example. All right, so we are almost done here. All right, so in this example, notice I've given you the acceleration. All right, how's this set up? Let's see. So the ball is rolling along at 15 meters a second when it begins rolling up a hill. So initial velocity is 15 meters a second up the hill. So why don't we go ahead and decide right now. Let's make uphill positive, downhill negative. Okay. As it rolls up, it accelerates at 3 meters per second squared. All right. So it's rolling up the hill, but because it's going up a hill, gravity is going to want to make it slow down. And so that acceleration is working against the velocity. My acceleration is down the hill, so I have to make it negative. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. So this is cool because this example right here is the first time where you're really going to start to, I hope, understand the importance of these positive and negative signs. All right. So let's find our velocity after five seconds. So I'm going to make a little table, which is, again, how I want you doing this on the homework. So time, velocity. So at time zero, when we first rolled the ball up the hill, it was going up at 15 meters a second, right? Let's see. This is not going to give me enough room. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. And so then what's happening is, according to this, look. Oh, well, let's write it out. Uh, every second. What's going to happen? Our velocity is going to decrease by 3 meters per second. Okay, so let's fill in this little chart here. Let's see what the velocity is doing. So after one second, the velocity is going to be 12. After two seconds, it's going to be 9. Let's go ahead and put meters per second up here and seconds here so we don't need to label them all. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ah! Sorry. Nine, ten. So what's the velocity doing? It's going down by three. So after three seconds, we're going to be at six. And then at three, zero. Huh, it stopped moving. What's this problem about? We're rolling a ball up a hill. The ball's going to go up the hill and come back down. There has to be a point where it stops. Aha! This point here is where it's at the top of its path. And then it's going to start coming down, which means now my velocity needs to be negative 3 and then negative 6. Oh, so this acceleration is telling me every second the velocity decreases by 3. And eventually it's going to become negative, which means eventually it's going to come back down the hill. All right, what this allows us to do is solve our problem in one big step instead of thinking about the upward motion and the downward motion independent of one another, right? This is all of it. All right, so... What's the velocity after five seconds? Zero. That's where it stopped moving up the hill. Okay, what's the velocity after seven seconds? Negative six meters a second, or better yet, six meters a second downhill, so that we understand what the negative means, right? All right, let's see. Um, question B, how long after encountering, encountering the hill will the ball stop rolling up and begin rolling back down? Again, that's five seconds, right? Because that's when it gets to the top of the path. Okay? All right, so that's the deal there. Now, this is how I want you solving tonight's homework. I want you to process what the acceleration means and then use a chart. The only time you're going to actually use an equation on tonight's homework is to calculate the acceleration if it's not given to you. Okay? Now, sometimes though, like, so this is all fine and dandy. I just said fine and dandy. I don't know that I've ever said it before. I won't do it again. Uh, everything on this table is cool. But it's not really practical, right? Because, like, what if the time was a 1,000 seconds? Or what if the acceleration wasn't a whole number? Then we would want to use equations. So by the time we get to the second homework assignment, here's how I'm going to be solving these. So this is the exact same example. So um, initial velocity, 15 meters a second. Uh, acceleration, negative 3 meters per second squared. Time is 5 seconds. Find the velocity at the end of five seconds. So we're looking for VF, right? The velocity at the end of these five seconds. So acceleration equals VF minus VI over T. All right, so notice this equation has four variables in it. All right, if I give you three of them, you can always find the missing one, right? So that's how most of the problems are actually going to be set up. 
This equation we use all year long. So there are two ways we can algebra this. So if you ever want to solve for time, multiply both sides by t and divide by a to get this equation. This equation is not on your equation sheet simply because it's the exact same as the one above it, right? These are both the same equation, just algebraically rearranged. Students, I tend to find, forget about this equation. So write this down, maybe put it on your equation sheet, okay? Like write it on there. You won't get it on the test, but hopefully you'll see it on your sheet enough times it'll be like, oh, that's right, there's that one extra one, all right? Now, the other one that we use a lot is if you have to solve for VF, then we can do that. So if you algebra this, multiply by T and add VI to both sides, we get this equation, which also gets used a lot. Um, VF equals VI plus A times T. So this is the velocity you began at, and then it changes by this amount every second for this many seconds, all right? So those are uh, three equations that are gonna get used a lot this year. Okay, uh, the top and bottom ones are on your equation sheet. This middle time one is not. All right, so now we can apply that here. Let's find our VF. Let's see, so VF for this problem is gonna be VI, 15 meters a second, and then, so I'm using this equation here. The velocity decreases by three meters a second every second for five seconds. 15 plus negative three times five gives you zero meters a second. All right, there we go.